Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to graph rational functions. And in this case, we're going to have a horizontal asymptote. However, what we're going to do is we're still just going to go and apply this just like we would be doing any other rational function. We're going to still um, look for the same symmetry, asymptotes, intercepts, and so forth to go ahead and graph. Um, so let's just kind of go through the simple steps. But once we get to um, horizontal asymptote, we'll see how we're going to transcend into a slant oblique asymptote. But the first thing is first, we need to check for symmetry. So I'm going to take f of negative x, and then I do negative x squared minus 4 over negative x. Simplify that, I get x squared minus 4 all over negative x. So therefore, I do not have um, the exact same um, function, nor do I have the negation of the function. So therefore, no symmetry exists. All right, next thing is to identify the, uh, the y-intercept. Now remember the y-intercept is when x is equal to 0. So I'm simply going to plug 0 in for x and solve for f of x, which would represent the y-intercept. Um, so I have f of x equals 0 squared minus 4 divided by 0. And you can obviously see that 0 is in my denominator, so therefore that's going to be undefined. So therefore there is, let's use a different color. So therefore, there is no y-intercept. All right, so therefore, the graph does not cross the y-intercept. Now let's go and check the x-intercept. x-intercept is going to be when y equals to 0. So therefore, let's see here. I'm going to now replace f of x with 0 and then solve for x in this equation. Now again, to solve for x, I need to get the x off the denominator. So I'll multiply by x on both sides. This goes to 0, and I'm left with x squared minus 4. Then I'm going to have to add 4 to both sides. And what I obtain is 4 equals x squared. Then to solve for that, I take the square root of both sides. Remember, when you introduce the square root, you've got to make sure you take plus or minus 2 equals x. So therefore, my x-intercept is equal to negative 2 or plus or minus 2. So we've got to make sure we include the positive and the negative um, value here. So the next thing is going to be my vertical asymptote. So my vertical asymptote is when my denominator is equal to 0, x equals 0. So guess what? I don't have to solve anything. I have a vertical asymptote at x equals 0 because I cannot have 0 in my denominator. Easy enough. Step number 5 is identifying the horizontal asymptote. So when we look at this, again, we want to compare the degrees of the numerator and the denominator. So our degree in our numerator is larger than the degree in our denominator. When we have that the case, we do not have a horizontal asymptote. So that is none. However, if we do not have a horizontal asymptote, we have to make sure we have to check for a slant or an oblique asymptote. So to do that, what we're simply going to do is divide our denominator into our numerator. So this is part of this. Um, I'll call this slant asymptote. So I'll do x divided by x squared minus 4. And then whatever the quotient is of that division is going to be your slant, as is going to be your slant asymptote. So x divides into x squared, x times. x times x is x squared. Subtract the two rows, and you get negative 4. x does not divide into negative 4, so that is your remainder. Now, when creating the equation of your slant is asymptote, you're only going to use the quotient, not the remainder, because um, it's long to add into the, but the remainder is actually going to um, go through and approach into affinity. So we're only going to be dealing with the quotient. So you can see my quotient is just y equals x. We're not going to be concerned with the remainder. So my slant asymptote is y equal to x. All right, so now let's go and graph like we have done before. I want to use green. Use black. All right, so let's plot the information that we have. We have we do not have a y-intercept. Um, an x-intercept is at positive 2 and at negative 2. Uh, we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. And we have a slant asymptote at y equals x. So if you remember, y equals x is the identity graph. Whatever x equals, y equals. So x equals 1, y equals 1. x equals 2, y equals 2. So that graph looks like this. OK, so now, just like we've done before, um, what we want to do is to determine two values to the left and to the right of our asymptote to determine the shape of the graph. So basically, I'd probably say the easiest two things I would do is choose negative 1, negative 2, positive 1, positive 2. 
So I do f of negative 1, f of negative 2, f of positive 1, f of positive 2. All right, so I do f of negative 1. Now I'm going to plug in x of negative 1 to find the f of x value, or the y value. So negative 1 squared is going to be 1. 1 minus 3. Um, 1 minus 4, I'm sorry, is negative 3. Divided by negative 1 is positive 3. f of negative 2. f of negative, uh, negative 2 squared is going negative 2 squared. Oh, I already know what negative 2 is. So let's not do negative 2. Let's do negative 3. And let's do positive 3. We already know what 2 and negative 2 are. We, gotta, we want to find two points. So let's do negative 3 and positive 3. Oh, well, I guess I already have two points there, right? In reality, I just have those two points. So that actually technically could work. But let's go and figure out negative 3 here real quick. Negative 3 squared would be 9. Uh, 9 minus 4 is 5. Divided by um, negative 3. So 5 over negative 3. Okay. Um, 1 is going to be 1 squared minus 4 is negative 3. So that's going to be a negative 3. And then if I did positive 3, that would be 9 minus 4 is 5. And that would be positive 5 thirds. And um, 1.6, I believe. 5 divided by 3 is 1.6. OK. So I'm just going to write approximately negative 1.6. That's negative 3, approximately positive 1.6. All right, so let's go and plot these points. So at negative 1, I'm up to 3. 1, 2, 3. At negative 3, I'm at negative 1.6. At, um, and at negative 2, I'm at 0, obviously. At positive 1, I'm at negative 3. 1, 2, 3. And at positive 3, I'm at 1.6. Oh, it's 1.6, negative 1. OK, so what you can see here is the graph it's going to take the shape of this kind of hyperbola. OK, and there you go. Um, all right, let's get into the next one. Again, first thing you want to do is identify symmetry. So if I identify symmetry, I'm going to do f of negative x equals negative x squared minus negative x plus 1 all over negative x minus 1. Well, that gives me x squared plus x plus 1 over negative x minus 1, which is not exactly the same, nor is it the negation of our function. So therefore, there is no symmetry. Step number two is going to identify the y-intercept. So remember, y-intercept is when x equals 0. So we're just going to plug 0 in for x. So I have 0 squared minus 0 plus 1 all over 0 minus 1. So what that gives me is a positive 1 over negative 1, which is going to equal a negative 1. So my y-intercept is y equals negative 1. Um, let me just take 80, um, 83. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, y equals negative 1. 86. Yeah, negative 1. OK, I'm good. Uh, x-intercept is y equals 0. So now we're going to place 0 for the f of x and then solve for x. So I have x squared minus x plus 1 divided by x minus 1. To get rid of the x minus 1 uh, or solve, I'm going to get rid of that on the denominator. So I'll multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm left with 0 equals x squared minus x plus 1. Uh, now I need to go ahead and determine what are going to be my um, x-intercepts, what two numbers multiply What two numbers multiply to um, give me 1, add to give me negative 1. As far as factorable, that's not going to work. So let me go and take the discriminant, because the discriminant will tell me if I have real or imaginary solutions. So remember, the discriminant is part of your quadratic formula, b squared minus 4 times a times c. Right? That's going to tell you the type of solutions you're going to have. You can obviously do the quadratic. You can obviously do the whole quadratic formula, but the best thing to do is just to test the discriminant. So when I do that, I have opposite of b, which is pos or b squared, which is negative one squared. Now let's do it here. 
So I have negative 1 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 1. What that gives me is 1 squared, which is 1, 1 minus 4, which equals the square root of negative 3. So if you were to solve for this, the, you have a square root of negative 3, which is imaginary solutions. So therefore, there are no x-intercepts. So we have a y-intercept, but we do not have any x-intercepts. The next thing is to determine the vertical asymptote. Um, so when we're looking at your vertical asymptote here, um, again, just set your denominator equal to 0. x minus 1 equals 0. So you can see x is equal to 1 is your vertical asymptote. Um, that cannot be factored as a whole, so that's going to be true. Then we have our horizontal asymptote, which we already know is none, right? Because the denominator in our um, denom the degree in our denominator is smaller than the degree in our numerator, so that's none. Now let's go ahead and check our slant asymptote. So to do that, we're going to need to apply long division. So I'll do x minus 1 divides into x squared minus x plus 1. So x goes into x squared. x times x times x is x squared. x times negative 1 is negative x. Subtract the rows. That goes out. That divides out. And I'm left with plus 1. x does not divide into plus 1, so that's going to be your remainder. So therefore, y equals x is my slant asymptote. So now let's go ahead and graph this equation. All right, so we don't have any symmetry. We have a y-intercept at negative 1. Um, we do not have any x-intercepts. We have a vertical asymptote at positive 1. And we have a slant asymptote at y equals 0. OK, so again, we're going to want to choose two points to the left and to the right of our asymptote to determine what our graph is going to look like. Um, so I'm going to choose negative 1 and 1, positive 1, positive 2, positive 3. So I'm going to find f of negative 1. I'm going to want to find f of 2. And I'm going to want to find f of 3. Because I already have the y-intercept, which is less of that vertical asymptote. So we have f of negative 1. So let's plug in negative 1 into this function. So up top, you have negative 1 squared, which is positive 1, minus a negative 1, which would be adding 1. So that's 2 plus 1 is 3 over uh, negative 1, or yeah, negative 1 into negative 1 minus 1 would be negative 2. So that's equivalent to negative 1.5. Because again, graphing, I think decimals is a little bit easier to graph for that. Let's do f of 2. So plug 2 into x into our equation. 2 squared is 4, minus 2 is 2, plus 1 is 3. And then 2 minus 1 is 2 minus, no, I'm sorry, 2 minus 1 is 1. So that equals a positive 3. And let's do 3. 3 squared is 9, minus 3 is going to be 6, plus 1 is 7. And then 3 minus 1 is 2. So 7 divides into 2. Let's go in 3.5. All right, so let's go and plot these points. So at, um, at negative 1, I'm at negative 1.5. Okay. At positive 2, I am at 3. 1, 2, 3. And at positive 3, I'm at 3.5. So what we can kind of see is this graph, as they approach their asymptotes, these are contained here, these are contained here. So you just want to connect your graphs and make them approach there. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph a rational function with slant asymptotes. Thanks.